Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his name. I have all my days. I will give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will give him praise forever. All my days. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise his name. He's worthy of the praises. He's worthy of our praises. He is so good. He is so good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give God praise. I give God praise all my days. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our teleconference. Another time we are here to give glory to God, to give praise to God. Our God is so good. We cannot thank Him enough. We cannot praise Him enough. We cannot glorify Him enough because He's so wonderful. Praise the name of the Lord. So we want to give God praise. And we want to give God praise all our days. Give God praise all our days. David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Praise the Lord Jesus. So. That it should be our wish and that should be our aspiration to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. We're going to go uh, continue our topic, um, be of good courage, be of good courage. And um, we have been talking about cor courage and how we as children of God should be courageous and God expect us to be courageous. Um, when we know we have the great Almighty God at our side, we know that we can be courageous among above all odds. Anything that comes against us, we know that we can stand up and be counted. and Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Praise the Lord. But before I go into the Word, I'm going to start with a short prayer. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your saving grace. Thank you a lot of time that we're able to hear to look into your Word. I pray you would inspire us with your Word, Lord Jesus. I pray you would direct us and give us more understanding of the great God who you are. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we're going to continue, my brethren, on our topic be of good courage. And today we want to talk about three boys, three Hebrew boys. Three Hebrew boys who stood up for Jesus, stood up for God. And I'm just going to read. My, the reading will be taken from, the reading will be taken from um, Daniel chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 1 down to the end. Daniel chapter 3. And verse 1 to the end. Praise the Lord. And in this we will see how God expects us to be. How God expects us to be like the lion. Because Jesus is known to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. And if we know the nature of lions, lions are fearless. So we are of that nature that we should be fearless. And God expects us to have that nature because He is fearless. He is God. Praise the Lord. So Daniel chapter 3, I'm going to read from verse 1 to the end. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. 
the weight was three th three square cubit and the breadth was six cubit six of six of the of six cubit he set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together gathered together princes and governors captains and judges treasurers counselors sheriff and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up then the princes and the governor and the captain and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriff and all the rulers of the province were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up then and herald cried aloud to you it is commanded O people nations and languages that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And whosoever falleth not down and worship shall be the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace therefore at the time when all the people heard the sound of the flute cornet the flute the harp the sackbut psaltery and all kinds of music all the people the nation and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews they spake and said the king Nebuchadnezzar the king O king live forever thou O king had made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship the golden image, that he should be cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over their fears of the province of Babylon Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego these three O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods now worship thou th hast set up then Nebuchadnezzar is in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they were brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, It is true, Shadrach, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that ye serve not my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if ye be ready that what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the suckbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kind of music, if ye fall not down and worship this image which I have made, well, if ye fall down and worship this image which I have made, well, but if he worship not, he shall be cast the same hour in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 
And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so that our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and if he will deliver us out of his out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his misery was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace uh -huh. seven times more oh, yes. than it was wont to be heated. We have the lunchtime one. And he, seven times more than it was to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these three men were bound in their coats, their hosen and hats and their garment, other garments and were cast into the midst of the fire, burning fire furnace. Therefore, because the king commanded was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flames of the fire slew the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, and the king was astounded, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto, unto the king, true, my, true, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of their fort is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes and governors and captains and king counselors gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power. Nor was their heel on their head swinged. Neither were their coat changed, nor smell of fire had passed on them. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be God, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels to deliver his servant that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yield their bodies that they may not serve or worship any god except their own God. Therefore I made a decree 
that every people, nation, language will speak anything against God, against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cast. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. Therefore, I made a decree that every people, nation, and language will speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their house shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. So the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I think many of us are familiar with the story of Nebuchadnezzar and uh, how he made this great image, how made of gold, golden image. Height was three score, bit, three score cubit and breadth was six cubit. So I imagine it was a very huge um, statue that he made, image that he made. And being of gold is like it's a precious thing that when Nebuchadnezzar say, I will give the command, I give the command, the king gather all the princes, all the men of honor in his kingdom. He bought them, the princes, the governor, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, counselors, the sheriff, all the men of, of authority, he brought them together. Because this image that he made up was something dear to his heart. And he wanted to show that he was the king. And whatever he says should be done, should be obeyed. Whatever law or decree that he made should be obeyed. Nebuchadnezzar, we know, was a very proud man, very proud man. And we see what God did to him in his latter days, but we won't go into that part. So he brought all his chief princes, governor, captain together, the judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriff, and made a declaration. The declaration was that if when they hear, they hear the cry to you, is commanded, he said, oh people, a nation, and language, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. So it was a massive occasion. Everyone gathered around to see this image, to bow down and worship this image. It was the king made the decree. So once he made the decree, it was expected that everyone should obey this decree that the king had made. And so when they, they heard a sound of all kind of music, everyone bowed down. Bowed down to worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They all bowed down. They bowed down because of fear. They began bowed down because they heard the consequence if they did not bow down. Not necessarily because they believe in the image, but the consequence of not bowing down would mean that they would be cast in the midst of a burning fire furnace. And obviously no one, no one would really want to be in a situation that they are cast in the midst of a, a burning fire furnace. I mean, here in London last week, or the week before, there was a, a, week, a few days of very warm, warm weather, very warm weather. And most of the people I work with, uh, patients come in there, complain, oh, it is so hot. It's maybe it was about 28 or something like that. Oh, I can't be, you know, can't. 
And that, that's not, you know, that is not a burning fire with furnace. That's just a, a warm sun heat from heat from the sun. But imagine what it would be like to be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Imagine the heat. And imagine that you think of yourself that if I go, I'm not going to survive. I will be just consumed by the heat. And so most people who heard nation and language and all the people that gather around, they were so fearful. And you know, God don't want us to be fearful. I always say, God do not want us to be fearful. God did not give us a spirit of fear. At no time in history has God given his people a spirit of fear. A fear the spirit of fear should not should not rule over us. I always say there a little fear will come, but we must overcome fear. We cannot let fear master us. Now these people, they were masters by fear because they did not want to be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. So at the time now they heard, wherefore, in verse 8 it says, at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews and spake unto Nebuchadnezzar the king unto the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the dulcimer, all kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. So here they bring a complaint on three, three Hebrew boys. Three Hebrew boys who believe that in their God, who wanted to obey their God, because the, the, the Moses had commanded that they should not serve any images apart from God. They have that in their heart. Moses had commanded they should not bow down to any idol or images and they should not serve any idol or images. These three boys had it in their heart to keep the law as according to what Moses had given them. And nothing, they was not going to be distracted or taken away from it. So there's always someone to point pointing fingers at they, these boys. And these Chaldeans came to the king and said, three, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, nor serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So there's always someone there to point fingers. And so this Chaldean was pointing fingers because they were aware of the fact that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were committed to their God. Just as we should be so committed to our God. And some of the things that's going on in the world today, there's no way that we can agree. Things like the LGBTQ community, and these things, there's no way we can agree with it. There's no way on earth. Same-sex marriage and all these things, we have to talk up against it. And it doesn't matter. We should be like these boys. We're not being cast into the burning fiery furnace, but we are being challenged with the laws that are made today. Certain things that is against the will of God. God has not changed. Because God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah because of the wickedness which has been made law today. God destroyed with brimstone and fire. God, Abraham, God said to Abraham, I'm going to destroy the city. 
The same thing that happened in, Sad in Sodom and Gomorrah is happening today. And we should be complicit. We should speak up against it. Because God is against it. So these Chaldeans accused these three men of not bowing before this great image which Nebuchadnezzar had set up. He said, they said to king, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, nor, nor will they serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So when Nebuchadnezzar hear these words, he wanted, he didn't want anyone to uh, 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 disobey uh, his decree that he made. He was angry. The Bible said Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury. How Nebuchadnezzar must have felt when he heard that these men are not bowing. What? They're not bowing before that image? And he sent and brought them before him. And they were brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that do not he serve my gods, nor worship the golden image that I have set up? No, no, if he be ready, at the time he hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbots, flustery, dulcimer, and all kind of music, he fall down and worship, the image which I have made? Well, but if he worship not, he shall be cast the said hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So Nebuchadnezzar, being a heathen, Flying in the face of God. You say, who is the God that will deliver you? He believed that he had so much power. And it happens throughout history. Men always feel they have so much power that they, can, they have more power than God. Even Pharaoh in Egypt, he thought he had more power than God. But we see what happened to him. He was drowned in the Red Sea. Because he did not, he wanted to challenge God. No man should challenge God. No man should challenge God. And so this is what Nebuchadnezzar was thinking. He could challenge God. He said, who is this God who shall deliver thee, deliver you out of my hands? In every case, in every situation, in every scenario, God will have the last say. God must have the last say. God must have the final say of what is to be and what is not to be. No man, no man can over counteract God's, God's, command, God's precepts. No man. And of course, Nebuchadnezzar thought he had the power, like so many kings in, in time past believed that they had more power than God. But here we go, these three men became bound together, you know, united together. They answered the king in one accord. They made up their mind. You know, unity is strength. It is good when we unify ourselves. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king and said unto him, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Let's imagine three Hebrew boys talking before the king, king of Babylon, the great king, Nebuchadnezzar. When we are with God, we don't need to fear. We can be as bold as a lion. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answer. We are not careful to answer you in this matter, 
O King. We're not fearful. We are not fearful. You stand before the king of the province of Babylon, who had so much power, who had all his counselors, his lawyers, and his, you know, all his men, mighty men around him, and they were not afraid. So the answer be it so. Be, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not I love this but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up How do you like that for being firm and being confident and being assured, not wishy-washy, not even doubting, but just saying, no, we are not going to bow. If our God deliver us, he is able to deliver us. But if not, now this, if not, is a big word. If not, if not comes in, many times in the scripture if not comes in when Hester had to go before the king and it was not lawful for her to go before the king but she said I will go and if I perish I perish you know this is how God wants us to be brethren God wants us to be affirmed if we are firm about what we say about God, how we believe God, how we trust God, how we obey God, nothing can sway, sway us. These boys was not fearful. All the people were fearful. They were, they were afraid to be cast into the fire. But these boys were not fearful. They were not fearful because they knew what God could do. And they knew the benefit of obeying God. They knew the benefit of not bowing before this idol, this image. They knew the benefit of not, of not obeying the king. Even though he was of authority, but he was not doing things in the law. He was not doing things in, in God's way. He was doing things in his own way. And so they have every right. You know, I remember one time that um, Joshua said to choose he now with whom he may serve. He said to the children of Israel, choose he now whom he may serve. If God be God, serve him. And if Baal be God, serve him. We have a choice. Are we serving God? Are we serving the demon authority who tells us sometimes to do things, who legalize something which is against the will of God? Are we going to agree with them? Are we going to say, oh, they are in control, we have to obey? No. And the LGBTQ community is something that people accept. We cannot accept that because it's against the will of God. It doesn't matter. If we are threatened to be cast in prison or into the, you know, whatever, we must say, no, God is it's against the will of God. God has not changed. That's unnatural. The same-sex marriage is not natural. Men marrying men, women marrying men, it's unnatural. It's against God. Anyone who continue that way and don't repent will end up in hell. And that's worse than the fiery furnace. So then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, oh, he's so angry because he feels that these boys should not come up against him and contradict what he has done. He was full of fury. And the form of his 
visual was changed against Shadow. His face, his countenance was was changed. He wasn't very pleasant in his face. You know, he was not very happy at all. He was very angry. And in his anger, in his anger, therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was to be heated. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, my dear pastor? Can you imagine the heat of the f seven times more? And they were going to be cast. That means even before they enter into the furnace, they'll be dead. That is the heat. The heat was so intense. Yeah. But still, they had courage. And, you know, our topic is about courage. Brethren, we must have courage. Amen. These boys had courage. We talked about David last week. The courage that David had, a man of courage, went up against Goliath and defeated him. When God is on our side, nothing can come up against, nothing can overcome us. Nothing. Amen. When God is on our side, we have nothing to fear. And it's good to know that we can have a life when we don't need to fear anything, anyone. Because we have the great Jehovah, Almighty God, Jesus Christ, who is there right beside us at all times. So when Nebuchadnezzar said that this furnace must be heated seven times the normal heat, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to ban Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the, into the burning fiery furnace. How, imagine how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego felt. Imagine how they felt. But I'm saying that they were confident in God. They were confident in the God that they serve. Because I said, if he won't deliver us, we will, we will still will not bow. We're not going to disobey. So God expects us to have this confidence in him. No matter what comes up against us, knowing that God is able to deliver. The songwriter said, Daniel, God surely will deliver. God will, if we only look to him by faith, Daniel, God surely will deliver. Then they bound these men. They bound them. Tied them up. Imagine that they, there's no way to escape. And cast them into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, the king command. Therefore, it says the king command. And yes, the king commanded. And these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, felt bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. So they took them up as the king commanded. It says the king commandment was urgent. And the fire was exceedingly hot. And the flames of the fire slew the men who took of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Praise God. Patron, God is so good. God is not going to fail anyone who trusts in him. God cannot fail. These men trusted in God. They were told by the king that if they did not bow, they would be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 
they were told that the furnace would be heated seven times yeah. its normal heat. And they stood up. This, this, brethren, this is what God expects of us, you know. God expects us to stand up. They stood up before the king and before his mighty men and said, we will not bow before this image. We will not bow. If God delivers us, we know he can. But if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. We are standing upon the word of God. We are standing upon the commandment of God. We will not bow. And they cast them into the fire. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They fell down. They threw them in. The men that threw them in the fire were slow, was, slow, was killed. The men who actually took them to throw them in the fire, the fire consumed them. But Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego fell down into the fire into the pit of the fire, into the heart of the fire, Amen. where it is hottest, where the heat is hottest, highest degree. Amen. And they fell down bound in the midst of the fire furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astounded. You know, when we stand up for Jesus, when we stand up for God, we can astound, we can astound kings, queen, prime minister, we can astound anyone. We can show them what our God can do. And these three Hebrew boys, because of their courage, they show the king what God can do. And so we also, through our courage, we can show the king, and the, the prince, the prime minister, whosoever, the king or whatever, what God can do. It says King Nebuchadnezzar King was astounded and rose up in haste. Can you imagine? He was shocked. He can't believe that the fire was so hot and he threw the men in there and the men are in there and they're still there and they're not automatically consumed. And he stood, he spake and said unto his counselors, Did we did not we throw three men bound into the fire? And they answered and said unto the king, True O king. He said he answered and said, Lo, I see four men walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fort is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. What a revelation. The king's eyes was open. The king was astounded. The king did not realize that there is a God in heaven who rule among men, who reign eternal. The king did not understand that there is a savior who can save in every situation, who can deliver every, in every situation. He did not. No, he did not realize. Now he knows. Now he realized. And he only realized because of the courage of these three boys. He only realized because of the courage, courageousness of these three boys who said they will stand upon the word of God. Who said they will obey their God? Who said they will not bow before any graven image? Who know that God alone, he's Lord? He answered, Lord, four men walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. They are walking in. You know, I'm telling you sometimes things that come upon us, God can change every situation. God can cool down any heat that the devil put upon us. 
that enemy put upon us. God can put light in with this darkness. God can turn everything around. And in this case, these boys was in the midst of the fire, but they were cool. Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo was cast in the fire, but they were cool. Yeah. Hallelujah. They were not hurt. They did not feel any heat. They were cool. Because God changed the fire. God created fire. God, fire is a creation of God. And God can turn fire into coolness. This is why when Moses went up on the mountain and saw that tree burning, it was not consumed. Oh, praise God. The fire was in the tree. The leaves, the fire was in all over the tree. But it was not consumed because God was in it. When God is in it, everything is cool. Even the hottest fire, he cool it. He can cool it down instantly. So this is why I said when we know God, we should not fear. Jesus came down and stood with them. When we need God, when we think God is not there, God is going to, God is going to show up. He's going to show up. When we say, we, we, I'm alone. We think you're alone. God is going to show up. Jesus is going to show up. All the way. Jesus never showed up in the fire, fire until they were cast in. And we know that he's a great deliverer. So then Nebuchadnezzar, verse 26, came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. And spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servant of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. And the princess, the governor, the captain, the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose body the fire had no power. Fire can't have more power than God, because God made fire. Water can't have more power than God, because God Amen. made water. Amen. Nothing that live it, that creep it upon the earth has more power of God, more than God because God created them all. That's why the word says, you know, we can tread upon the adder, we can tread upon the serpent, it will not harm us because God who created, created the serpent. We should not fear, brethren. Sons of God, march forward. In the power of the latter rain. We are in the latter rain. We are in a, we are in a time of power. Brethren, we are in a time of power. And we need to seize upon this power. These three Hebrew boys knew the power. And they seized upon it. They stood upon it. They stand for the power. No, it says, No upon their bodies, being gathered, there was nothing world came upon their bodies. The fire had no power. Nor was I here. Not a single hair on their head was singed. Nor the, their coat changed. Nor the smell of, not even the smell of fire. Brethren, let us stand up in the power of the latter rain. We're in the, we're in the latter days now. We're in the last days. God gave us power. Let us try and exercise the power that God gave us by standing upon God's word, by believing in God, by trusting in God, by telling the devil he's a liar and know that only God has the power. There's no power above the power of God. 
Here we hear about principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, but it is not above the power of God. The power of God is ex exceedingly above any power. And because these three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, knew what their God could do, and we should know what our God can do. Many of us have been delivered from many circumstances, many situations. We have already been delivered, and we know what God can do. We know God has delivered us before, and we know that God can deliver us time and time and time and time, time again. Then in closing it says, then, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and the Bendigo, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yield their bodies, that they may not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I made a decree that every person, nation, language, we speak at anything amidst against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunhill, because there is no God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Amen. What a wonderful story of men who with courage trust in the Lord and how God bring them out and actually made, the, you know, whatever law these people make, are these law that they make all the time, which is against God. We can change their mind. We can yeah, make yeah. them change the decree. We can. We have the power. Yeah. When they made these law, which is against God's will, what they're teaching young children in school, yeah. sexual education, instead of teaching them about their maths and English, we can yeah. make these people change their, change their mind and change yeah. the law when yeah. they realize there's a God who is against such. And if we stand up against them and tell them that this is wrong, Amen. they will see their change can come. We can make a change. Amen. So God bless you, my brethren. Courage. Be of good courage. I want us to be so courageous. I want us to be able to stand before prime ministers and kings. Amen. Stand before them and say, Thus said God. See what is happening um, in Kenya. What is happening there? How many people have been killed because they are protesting about the injustice of the government? See what is happening elsewhere all over the world because of the evil of men, the evil intention of men. But there is a God who has said, God has the last say. No man. No man can go above what God says. So the good Lord bless you, my brother. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to give... Um you know, and you saw what went through for um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel in the lion's den, mm. and even now things happen, and we have to continue to just not, you know, lean on our own understanding That's and just right. trust in God and not... Um, give up to give in to what they want in, in, in the world because in the world they're, they're trying to do all sorts of things um, to the children they're trying to do all sorts of things to the, the adults and they're just wickedness, wickedness in high places and when I see the wickedness in high places it just reminds me of the Romans still We're still those are the Romans to me what's going on out there, all those leaders and everything it's the same things that's going on back then and it's the same things that's going on now and so we've just got to continue to lean on God and as you said when the um, he even said to make even the, the fire hotter. Can you imagine that fire if it's hot, the fire is hot already? You know, I remember just burn, sometimes you just burn or knock your knee or burn your fingertip. Mm. That pain is so sharp. I can't okay. even imagine. And for him to be, them to be so bold, 
you know, to actually actually be ready to trust in God. And that's not an easy yeah. thing. It's not to trust in God, but to be able to say that you're really going to do it. It's easy for us to say this. But would we, if we're faced in that same situation, and right now they're coming to get us because they hear what we're talking about, and they're going to, there's a big, big dip with fire in it, burning fire, <laughs> dragging onto the walls and saying, no, no, no. Are we going to just, you know, give in to it? And, and say, well, I trust in my God. So what they did is to be commended. What Daniel did as well, and many others, even all disciples, look how they died. One wanted to be upside down crucified. One was, I think, even boiled in oil, and he was he was delivered. And another one, head chopped off, look at uh, John the Baptist. His head was severed off, and so many other things that happened to them. So we have to know that these are things that can happen to us. It's not going to always be easy. And we're coming to the end times right now. So we're going to have to be able to, to be, be like these um, Hebrew boys and Daniel and all the others as well. So um, these are my few words. God bless you all. Have a very uh, blessed Sunday as well. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Rose. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, indeed. We have to be prepared. But we know that God is with us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to fear at all. No fear. We are not weak people we are strong people and i said we are to remember we are strong people the bible says we are more than conquerors more than conquerors sister mclean god bless you god bless you too brother Jeff. god bless you glad to have you joining us maybe you give us a little thought on the word of courage how courageous we should be as children of god oh brother Jones, i think you covered everything but <laughs> To be obedient, John. Good evening, everyone. Good, Good evening. evening, Minister James. When I heard Pastor McCann voice there, yes, he's there. And Sister yes, Rose and the rest that is on Mr. the is there. I just want to greet you all in in the sweet and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank him for his grace and his mercy. He have been so good to us. We are still here. So he's still here lifting up his holy name, rejoicing yes. because he is good. And as I listen to you speaking about Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they really had a faith that stand out. Yes. And as I heard Sister um, Rose was saying, if they make up a fire there and should um um so it is fire they going to throw us in the fire would we will be willing would we would we deny we would we deny our fate or would we stand like the three Hebrew yes. boy? You know, it takes courage and it takes heart. Take heart, it takes faith it does. to stand. But we are in the end time, we are in the last days. So many persecuted church Christian in Nigeria and and um, India and this, so it is over. I uh, think it's over uh, sixty or more churches now that is uh, under under persecution, you know. And even at church today, this evening after church, we had um fasting and we were there and we we're praying for the persecuted Christian, the persecuted churches. You know that God will give them strong feet to endure on the strength and God will comfort them. And as you were talking, Brother Tim, say, I remember I oh, want the Holy Spirit bring me back when when Peter was in prison and when the angel came and woke him up and said, put on your sandal and when they reached to the iron gate, the iron gate opened. God is mighty and God is powerful. Yes, yes. And he can do everything and he can do all things when we trust in him and have that faith in him. That no matter what you see, what is going on, God is our God is our judge and he is our Lord giver. Yes. And he is above all. And at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow. For his name is above all names. And so God is mighty and God is powerful and there is nothing too hard for him. Mm. And that bring me back to Paul and Silas when they were in jail. And at midnight, at midnight, yes. they were singing songs. Of big, they didn't worry who would go there, Dale. They would say, well, but... We, I think I would say, look, I am serving God, and look what happened to me. You know, they were not concerned about that. They were singing hymns. And so, there was an earthquake. 
<laughs> yes, it was. The prison. Yes. And all the prisoners, every one of them get loose. So God is mighty and his eyes are watching us. His eyes are over us. Yes. All we have to do is to just live right for God's sake. Live clean. Walk right. Holiness belong to the Lord. And then let us um, stay at the place so we can hear the voice of the Lord. Because there is two voices speaking. Yes. We have the enemy voice speaking because this evening as I was in the kitchen making dinner because Tanya gone to work and I came home late from church. You know what this voice said to me? Don't let him hear me shout again. I said, what? I said, devil, hold your peace. <laughs> because, you know, there is a battle, there is a fight, there is a spiritual warfare going on in, my, in, 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 in our house here. And it's only God, only God knows only God. a spiritual yes, warfare, yes, a devil, spirit of the devil is a liar. a spirit of disturbance, a spirit, a stubborn spirit that I'm fighting with. As I'm dealing with, and they don't want me to hear me pray. That's what, what the enemy said to me this evening. Don't let him hear, see me shout again. And I have to rebuke and I have to tell Sister Sean. That's right. But I know in whom I believe and I know who I serve. And I'm not giving up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I am holding on because I must get the victory. Yes, I am. I will overcome because I am determined to hold out to the end. And I'm not mixing my salvation. I'm standing on the solid rock. You know, the song, the redemption song 350, when Israel out of bondage, a sea before them laid, the Lord reached down his mighty hand and he rolled oh, the sea away. God is going to roll my sea away and I'm going to have a testimony and I'm going to sing songs of victory. I'm going to sing, look what the Lord has done. Amen. What I'm praying for has come to pass. Deliverance has come. As a, as a man going up the hill, the hill was steep. Sweat was running down his brow. And as he journeyed, he said, deliverance will come. Yes. And I know that deliverance will come it my will. day. Way one day, if I only be patient and wait upon the Lord, and be of good courage, and no weapon that form against me shall prosper, because the Lord had revealed that to me one early morning. Isaiah 54 and verse 17, as plain as ABC, when I woke up, day was light, morning light. Somebody came to me and said, Isaiah 54, Verse 17, no weapon that is formed. I know that weapon is forming against me, but it shall not stand because I am covered under the blood of Jesus and I'm fighting my way out. So thank you all for listening and thank you, Brother Thompson. God bless you all. This is my few words in Jesus' name. God. I am determined to hold out to the end. Yes, God bless you, Sister Mark. God bless you. The road is rough. And the going is tough, mm -hmm. but you know, as I says, you know, you know, many of the patriots and prophets have been through very rough and rocky roads, but God, God always bringing them out.